Right now, thousands of residents in Brandenburg are under a boil water advisory after a broken main caused a bit of a crisis Monday. That water emergency was declared after a leak caused the pump failure at the water plant. Residents still asked to conserve water by only using their essential needs. It is important to know water will be discolored, the city said, for the time being. So please be aware of that before washing any laundry. Staying in Meade County, the sheriff's office there is looking for help after deputies found a woman dead in her home. Deputies originally responded to a call of a break in at the the house there on Old Mill Road in Brandenburg. They do believe foul play is suspected in her death. Anyone with information is asked to call the sheriff's office at the number there on your screen. That's 270-422-4937. Close to 1,000 JCPS teachers will be receiving training this week on a new district-wide reading curriculum that's being implemented in the new school year. This will be the first time in years that every elementary and middle school will be using the same curriculum. And again, this all passed by the legislature um, after a Courier-Journal year-long investigation between the lines that found the state was using an out-of-date form of reading instruction and the reading scores were pretty low on that. Our Grace McKenna is on this story today. She'll be giving us the latest updates on this learning process today at four. Now over to New Albany where it's city councils considering an ordinance that would legalize open containers in parts of downtown. This was discussed at a council meeting last night. It follows a law signed by Indiana's governor last month, allowing for designated outdoor refreshment areas. Several people at that meeting supporting the idea, others raising concerns about things like safety and keeping the downtown area clean. There is a lot of litter on Friday and Saturday nights that happen not including in the door right now. So um, I would like to see some type of trash pickup or something as a resident because as it currently goes, you can walk outside almost any of the uh, late night bars on a Friday or Saturday and see their cups already out there at bottles or cans. Now under this ordinance, you would not be able to bring your own drinks and alcohol that would have to be purchased through a participating business. New Albany City Council is still considering the idea and is expected to seek input from local businesses. New Albany says it will foot the entire bill for the New Albany Floyd County Animal Shelter for the rest of the year. Last night, the council voted to terminate an interlocal agreement with the Floyd County government, which until now is helping fund the shelter. But New Albany's mayor claims Floyd County is behind on more than a million dollars in payments. The New Albany's mayor said the shelter will continue to provide service outside of the city limits into Floyd County through the end of the year. Now to our continuing coverage of Churchill Downs. Monday evening, the Kentucky Horse Racing Commission released its first insights into the findings of three necropsies or horse autopsies. Twelve horses have died at that track since April due to leg injuries, two on Derby Day. The latest report is on the horse named Freezing Point. So that horse was euthanized on May 6th after a catastrophic injury. Officials saying that the trainer noted track conditions played into the horse's death, but the rider did not agree. And an analysis of the track found nothing unusual. Yesterday, we also told you about the horse named Take Charge Brianna, who was euthanized on the track on May 2nd. That report showed no red flags. And the final necropsy released was on the horse named Parents Pride, who collapsed and died on April 29th. This was one of the horses trained by Safi Joseph Jr., who's since been suspended by Churchill Downs. Again, no flat red flags found in either of those cases. WHAS 11 and our focus team are looking into the tragedies at the track. We'll be sharing investigations all week long, every day at 6 p.m. Well, today we commemorate the 79th anniversary of D-Day. The operation, often referred to as the storming of the beaches of Normandy, France, changed the course of the Second World War. 160,000 Allied troops moved in by land and air to fight Hitler's army on June 6th of 1944. More than 13,000 aircraft, 5,000 ships all supported our mission, making it the largest sea, air, and land invasion in history at the time. Roughly 4,000 Allied troops died that day, many even before making it to shore because they were dropped in too deep water and sank under the weight of their guns and equipment. The youngest of the surviving soldiers of World War II now in their 90s. Well, today, those World War II veterans, many of them local, were thanked for honoring or thanked and honored for their service during that time, ranging anywhere from 96 years old to 105. These vets served in all different branches in all different parts of the world. 
They were offered special rides on World War II Jeeps and other vintage military vehicles. Family, friends, and community members joined their veterans and officials from Honor Flight Bluegrass to thank them for their sacrifice, and that meant the world to them. It's very moving to have that, mm -hmm. and uh, this is new to me. I've only been in the state of Kentucky for three years, mm -hmm. and I'm always impressed with how, how much the state does for veterans. A total of 11 veterans were present at today's ceremony. So much history there.